LSU Tigers under Dale Brown in the tournament house in College Park, Maryland. Lenny Wirtz, Sid Rotenheffer, and Mark DiStaiola are the officials, and they're underway. And the rebound comes down for LSU. LSU very successful that time with the zone. Here's Jack Clever as dribble as I've ever seen. Prince Stewart, the sophomore out of Lexington, Kentucky. Ricky Blanton answers with a two. Oh, rebound comes down in the hands of Wayne Sims. Now Chris Jackson. That's for two. And he got by LSU's offense is really to put kind of four guys down on the baseline. And that leaves Jackson all kinds of room to maneuver one on one against his player. So his defender. So lots of problems for Stewart to defend him. And they're going to try. Hardaway. That is his range. He can drift. And now a chance for LSU to regain the lead. Wayne Sims gives LSU a he one point. A very Jackson. Dennis Tracy is a walk on. From the corner, three points. Take it out of bounds, step in. There's Hardaway, the junior out of Chicago. The call hits for two. Boy, great skip pass. Last four minutes. Well, that was size against no size. Foster, the big guy at seven feet. No match down there by any. Jackson ends his own personal battle with the Jackson missed times. Here comes the UTEP team in transition. Oh. Melvin. And simply, what a rejection by Foster. And here come the Miners. Hardaway, left-handed scoop shot. Rebound. This is Francis Azenwa. And again, Hardaway pushes it up. Nice dish to Stewart. Mouton, Jackson. We got some starts in the early part of the season when uh, they were searching for maybe one of the big guys who were really going to help them, but ended up with a rebounding problem. You know, for all of Tim Hardaway's skills, watch the unusual rotation he puts on the ball. There is no spin on his shot. Now, he releases it the same way all the time. Now, this is very interesting because most people think that you've got to spin the ball. That's the real proper way to do it. But if a ball player develops to be a good shooter and he got a mechanical quirk, don't worry about it. Don't disturb that category. And in the backcourt, Jackson, 4 of 13. Tim Hardaway, the junior out of Chicago, 4 of 12. But he does have a it. And LSU can cut the lead to single digits. Chris Jackson, nice move over Stewart. And he hits one. Boy, Jackson was two of his first 11. And now he's got it on target. Yep, and a little bump by Stewart, but Jackson has great leaping ability. So that he plays a little bit bigger than 6-2. After falling behind by 19 in the 315 mark of the first half. Decides to pass. Nice play by Johnny Melvin. Here's Hardaway for two. And that's the first basket for UTEP. Tim Hardaway goes to the line. I say one thing. That might just be what the LSU team needs. A little emotion. They're playing very, very subdued. They have not really been active at all. And maybe it's a little gimmick going on right here by Dale Brown to steam up his players and pump a little emotion into them. I wonder if you'll like four straight points and no possession of the ball. Here comes Hardaway again. This is the second technical. Did you ever get two called on you that quickly? Yes. Quicker than Dale. Did you get the third? I actually got a technical called on me for staring. That'll never happen to Dale Brown. Four in a row on the double T on Dale Brown. Hardaway. 
Nice pick and roll underneath. Oh, boy, did that look good. And Sims was measuring Antonio Davis from behind, and Hardaway just put it in a perfect spot. A little pick and roll. He heads to the hoop, and Hardaway looking, and he sees Sims behind Antonio Davis, but perfect place for the pass. Blanton has to go. Stolen back by Vernell Singleton and Chris Jackson. This is right. Singleton, nice move. Jackson ends up with the ball. A little move gives it to Singleton, and he can challenge anybody. I don't care if he's only 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, he's going up there with all the big guys. At the conclusion, a little between the legs. Jackson did it to him. He did it to Jackson. Jackson, three-pointer. Very active, quick forward. LSU trailed by 13 at the half. Foster doesn't want the shot. <laughs> oh, oh, why not? He not easy. Does have 15, but he hit two of his first 11 shots. Hardaway with a steal. The lead is 15. Could grow after the alley -oop. I think back to that double technical, if that was Dale's intention, it didn't work. Well, the harder that LSU is playing right now, UTEP is matching them with intensity. Hardaway and Stood really playing some great defense. There's another steal. Here's Tracy. Jackson on the right. Oh, nice touch. Over the 6'9", Antonio Davis. 21 from the field. The lead is 13. Three-pointer, Hardaway. He's got 23 above his season average of 21. The answer from Jackson. Oh, I'll tell you, that was that little glide and the quick pull up. Haskins just took his tie off before the ball game like he normally does, that clip-on tie. And he's just sitting back watching this thing. A lot of enjoyment. Could win the championship with. And it sure looks that way as the lowest seeded teams are doing their job. Footer. Should be eligible next year. They start one freshman, two sophomore, or two freshmen, two sophomores. And two There's Hardaway with some magic. Nice dive for the loose ball by Blanton, and Jackson picks it up. Off the pick. Nice soft shot. That's for two. You said he reminded you of somebody, but not a basketball player. He reminded me the first time I ever saw this kid play of Gordie Howe when I saw Gordie Howe for the first time. The great Detroit Red Wing uh, left winger, I guess he was, where he glide would glide up the but the ice and his ice skates are carrying the puck and it looked like it was so easily done until you looked at the guy that was trying to check him who was scurrying as hard as he could and still couldn't keep up. That's what Jackson reminds me of. LSU went on a run which ultimately cut that lead to seven with 640 to go in the ball game. And there's Hardaway with two more and a chance for a three-pointer. I'll tell you, that was one of the real dynamic shots of Tim Hardaway. Uh, he doesn't worry about people on the inside. You see him come free on the baseline. Now he's got a short defender on him, mishandles the ball a little bit, and still can get it over the top. He has great eyes to see if a defender's coming at him and really can change the arc of the shot. Hardaway with 27 points. His season high was 32 against Colorado State, and in the just-completed tournament, Western Athletic Conference, he scored 69 points. Jackson, it's in and out. Oh, look at that Stewart get on the front end of the break. Oh. That is a jet. Lead is 18. Largest lead of the night was 19. Chris Jackson gets two more. I have just seen some supremo. Many in the, in the WAC thought there should have been three. They thought New Mexico should have been in. Now Dennis Tracy and Tim Hardaway get into it. 
That all started, Tommy, on a foul called over here right in front of us when they exchanged words. Um, you certainly don't want to get in a fist fight with the new rules they put in place. And he kind of bumps into him and a little push, and by the way, just getting him to turn around and face him. And he's the uh, dive on the floor type. Get down low and work hard on defense, but really haven't been able to do the job against Hardaway today because this evening because Hardaway's got too much quickness for him. Hardaway with 29 points. Dale Brown's team, final four participants twice in the 80s. This is a team, though, that many picked for as low as eight. Tim Hardaway is an exceptionally fine defensive guard, too. He doesn't get all the top assignments because he's so important to their offense. But I would say that Jimmy Hardaway could just about play anybody. Prince Stewart, who's had a big night. Jackson reaches around, gets the steal. Lyle Mouton. Jackson rejected by Mark McCall. Jackson gets it back at Kansas. Concentration. And uh, didn't start, of course, because of the injury, but really made his presence felt on the board, uh, particularly the defensive board. But And they slipped the ball to him on the inside. Now, he could outleap anybody that uh, LSU had on the inside, and he really did what you're supposed to do. Go over the top. All right, Jim, 55 seconds to go. Chris Jackson, who missed two of his, or hit only two of his first 11 shots, has connected on 13 of his last 20. So he winds up right about his season average. He's got 31 points for the night. And in the process becomes the all-time leading scorer for freshmen in NCAA history. He also, of course, is the first freshman since Wayman Fisdale of Oklahoma to be named as an All-American first teamer. He's named three first teams so far. Well, I would say that he has got a great, bright future. Red Alback thinks that if he came out this year, he would be the first guy picked in the draft, at least by the Boston Celtics, if they were to have the first pick in the draft. That's how highly he thinks of it. But uh, Jackson is really going to even continue to grow. He's a very, very intelligent player and understanding what the possibilities are. And he uses this great athletic ability he has to outquick somebody. But it, it's taken hours and hours and hours to get that dribbling to the point where it, he uses it so effectively. You know, that makes all those programs feel that they, they've got some place to go in the next several years. You know, for a school like Siena to, to get past the first round, that's awfully important for their whole program. Chris Jackson hits for 33, but Tim Hardaway leads UTEP with 31. 